The Reserve Bank of India or the RBI has taken action against IIFL Finance for irregularities in its gold loan portfolio. Now, an investigation found that 67% of the company's gold loan accounts had discrepancies regarding the loan to value or the LTV ratio. The company was found to have manipulated the gold price while dispersing loans. Now, in response to this, the RBI has barred IIFL Finance from issue of new gold loans. Speaking about gold loans, they are a very popular option for borrowers in India. These are easy to obtain and require minimal documentation. Now, many non-banking financial companies or NBFCs offer gold loans at doorstep, making these even more accessible. In India, the organized market for gold loans is approximately 6 lakh crore rupees. Bank's share is 80% while the remaining 20% share belongs to NBFCs. The process of getting a gold loan is simple. All you have to do as a borrower is approach a bank or NBFC and pledge your gold as collateral. Then the lender assesses the value of the yellow metal. Then the financial institution or say the bank or the NBFC disperses a loan of up to 75% of the gold's value. In RBI's recent action, it has come to light that IIFL undervalued gold while disbursing loans. The NBFC accordingly sanctioned lower loan amounts. If the customer failed to repay the loan, the company auctioned the gold, making profits from its actual value. Now, before you take the loan, it is important that you get the gold, uh, gold valued independently. Why is that? Because you see, that will help you ensure that you get a fair deal from the lender. Now, these days, many institutions like Tanishk and Kalyan Dwellers give free gold valuation services. You will also get a receipt for that as well. If a finance company assesses your gold at a lower price, be cautious. Understand well that it might have fraudulent intentions. If you take a loan from such a company, they might manipulate interest and penalties levy. There is a significant difference in the interest rates of gold loans of banks and NBFCs. For instance, Government banks offer gold loans at 8.65% to 11% while private sector banks like say uh, Axis and HDFC charge 17% annually. Meanwhile, NBFCs on the other hand charge interest rates of up to uh, 36%. Similarly, there is a significant differences uh, or a difference in the processing fees as well. SBI and Canra Bank charge processing fees of 0.5% or up to a maximum of 5,000 rupees on the loan amount. Meanwhile, NBFCs charge processing fees of 1% or even more. If you do a little homework, you can save a considerable amount of interest every year. Gold loans usually have a tenure of up to three years. There are several options available for repayment as well. In the first option, you pay interest every month. You can repay the principal at the end. In the second option, interest and principal are combined uh, to calculate the EMI. You pay it every month. Some gold loans offer the bullet payment option. For example, if you have taken a loan of 1 lakh rupees and the annual interest amounts to 10,000 rupees, you can repay the entire 1.1 lakh rupee at once and retrieve your gold. You can choose the option according to your convenience. Now, speaking on this, personal finance expert Jitendra Sulanki suggests that the loan amount for gold loans is always lower than the value of gold. If a finance company undervalues your gold, you will naturally get a lower loan amount. If uh, due to any compulsion, you are unable to repay it, your gold might be auctioned off. It will cost you significant losses. Therefore, do thorough research of the valuation of the gold, interest rates and processing fees before you decide from where you will take the loan. Due to the business profitability, there is a plethora of lenders offering gold loans in the market. However, you should only take a gold loan from RBI regulated banks or finance companies. Choose the loan amount and options based on your repayment capacity.